Okay, I want to welcome everybody to our Lime Time in Texas podcast series. And today I've got a presentation I want to talk about the role of pozzolanic reactions in the lime stabilization process. So let me start off with just a definition of what is a pozzolan. A pozzolan is a siliceous or aluminous material that reacts in the presence of water and lime uh, to produce a stable water-soluble hydrate. For example, clay is a, is a pozzolan. So uh, the pozzolanic reaction that, that forms is called calcium silicate hydrate or CSH and calcium aluminate hydrate. Uh, those are the two uh, pozzolanic reactions. These products are essentially the same hydrates that, uh, th that form during the, the hydration of Portland cement. So pozzolanic reactions are very important. What they really do is they give the strength in soil stabilization. They're, they're the part that provides the strength and it's strength that uh, it continues to occur and increase over time. So if you look at the lime stabilization process just in general, if you take calcium hydroxide here, uh, in, which has a pH of about 12.4, and you introduce water and a source, the pozzolan, which is the clay that's a source of silica and alumina, you form this pozzolanic cement or cementitious material, again referred to as CSH and CAH. If you look at the lime soil uh, reactions, the typical things that happened is you first have a cation exchange, uh, and then if you look at the pictures there in the, in the upper uh, right hand corner of the slide, you take a big uh, chunk of clay and once you introduce that lime and the water to that, it's going to go through a process called flocculation and agglomeration. It's going to fluff up and you see there as you mix in the, the truck that's adding the, the lime slurry to that uh, clay soil. And as it's mixed in, you see uh, immediate textural change and it starts to begins to fluff up and, and it sees some of that uh, uh, gradation breakdown. Uh, what happens, so you see all that initial reaction and then what happens over time is you have this process, this pozzolanic reaction to where it's more or less making a, a pozzolanic cement out of that soil. So even though it looks completely different, so that if you look at the, the big clay, the clump of clay right there in that picture, and then at the very bottom left hand side it looks like sand. That's the whole chemical reaction taking place. So one of the big questions we have, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, it's very similar to what happens with the hydration of Portland cement. One of the questions we get very commonly is, can we use cement or Portland cement in lieu of lime? Uh, and can cement or can cement do what lime does? Well, cement's a very interesting uh, product. Uh, so it, it's, Portland cement's often promoted in the soils market as a calcium-based stabilizer, which it is. And it claims that there's claims that it can do the same thing that lime could do in clay soils. Uh, there's some things that are very true about uh, Portland cement. It's faster. It, it gives you high strength. It, you don't have to mellow Portland cement. Uh, you can open it to traffic the same day. So there's some very good properties of Portland cement. The question we talk about really here though is what about the pozzolanic reactions and how those things are different. So I'll point out a few things. Portland cement's made with about half the calcium oxide that lime is. So lime is almost 100% free calcium oxide. Uh, however, the one thing to remember about Portland cement, it has very little free calcium in it. So typically less than 2%, sometimes you can see about 3%. So it's that free calcium oxide that's available to react with that clay soil and transform it into a pozzolanic uh, cement. So again, there's not a lot of free calcium oxide in Portland cement. So it's, it just reacts very differently in the clay soil than what lime does. A general comment I'll make here is that uh, cement, particularly Portland cement, cannot do what lime does and lime certainly cannot do what Portland cement does. So we don't go try to build bridges out of lime because it just doesn't work in those type of uh, aggregates and, and things that you typically would use cement for. And by the same token, uh, it's generally not a good idea to try to use Portland cement in a, in a high PI or a heavy clay soil. I'll go into a little bit more detail on why, why we say that. So the question is again, can you use cement in lieu of lime? So in high PI clay, Portland cement's not really equivalent or interchangeable with lime because it can't complete the pozzolanic reaction that will permanently change the structure of the in situ clay. So the in situ clay, what we're talking there is the, the clay that's actually in the ground. So with Portland cement, the in situ clay particle is not really changed or transformed 
uh, it's more or less encapsulated by the Portland cement and you get a kind of a hard shell forming around the clay particles, but the, the clay particles themselves never are really, really changed. So as you, I guess you could say the in situ clay particles, they essentially remain intact. So uh, an advantage to some Portland cement is it sets up very quickly within three hours. Uh, but it also doesn't have the time or the available calcium to achieve uh, what lime does to break down that, uh, that highly plastic clay. So lime, on the other hand, forms pozzolanic reactions from the in situ clay in the ground. Uh, and it produces the CSH, that calcium silicate hydrate, calcium luminate hydrates. And in this case, the calcium comes from the lime, the silica and the alumina come from the clay that's in the ground. Uh, and the, obviously the water is, uh, the, the H or the hydrate comes from water. So with Portland cement, uh, it forms pozzolanic reactions essentially as soon as you add water to it. Because one thing to keep in mind, Portland cement is made with clay, so it got burned. When you make Portland cement, you burn clay in the kiln, uh, usually with some other things too, like iron oxide. But it's permanently bonded that calcium silicate and calcium aluminate are permanently formed in the, as it goes through the kiln. So they're not really available once you induce it, introduce it to, to a clay soil to freely react with that clay soil. So if you look at a picture, uh, and I've shown this picture a number of times, I want to just kind of go into showing the difference between the way that, that lime reacts with a, uh, with a clay soil and the way that cement reacts with the clay soil. So I'll point out a couple of things here and I'll point back at the screen. So the one on the left is lime. And by the way, this is calcium diffusion after a one year in service. And if you look at the line, the line treatment here, so what you see there in brown, the brown part is basically where calcium silicate hydrate and calcium aluminate hydrate have been formed. So it's formed pozzolanic cement out of what was the clay particle. So anytime you, when you see the white area there, that's the actual un, uh, undigested clay, if you want to think about it. It's basically what the, the clay still looks like. Uh, if you look very carefully at the, the Portland cement, after one year, you see all the white area there. And by the way, that may look like one little uh, piece of clay there, but what that is is actually thousands of particles of clay soil in there because these are very, very tiny sized particles. And what you see, if you look very, very carefully, is most of the brown part that you see is out of the, this outer shell because when you add water to that Portland cement, it immediately starts to react and form that hard shell. So it doesn't have the time really or the capacity to get in there and actually break down that clay soil. So the obvious concern is over time, if water gets into this clay soil there, it can still uh, expand and swell and do some of the bad things that can happen with clay soil. So unlike what happens with the, the lime, where the, the lime actually gets in and completely transforms that clay soil into a new, basically a pozzolanic cement. So a few comments about what really different, and some of this is kind of uh, rehashing some things we probably said in the past, but lime reacts within the existing clay soil particles, and when it's hydrated, it causes pozzolanic reaction that it completely transforms the clay soil into a new cementaceous product. The change to the internal chemical structure of that clay is irreversible. So you've completely changed that clay into something that's, again, you wouldn't recognize it as clay from then on. Uh, lime has to be combined with water and, pozzolan, and a pozzolan such as clay in order for it to work. So clay or fly ash or something like that, anything that's a source of silicon and alumina is what it's going to take to really get lime to, to start to form those reactions. Where Portland cement, when it's hydrated, it forms a cementaceous product around the clumps of clay and it acts as a shell or some people say it's like a glue. So it works really well for Portland cement, will work really well in gravel, sandy particles and things like that where it, it can basically glue those particles together. It just doesn't work as well in clay soil. It's not ideal, ideally suited for clay soil because it really can't get in and break, break up those clay particles. So there's no significant change with Portland cement. There's no significant change to the internal chemical structure of the clay. So cement only needs water to form cementitious product, calcium silicate hydrate, calcium aluminate hydrate, whereas in this case, uh, because clay is one of the essential components of Portland cement during the production process. So that's the main difference that you see there. In, in the, but overall, the only two products that are commonly known in the world that form pozzolanic cements are either lime when you add it to clay or Portland cement when you 
hydrate it with water. So just some summary comments about lime. Uh, lime is a chemical called calcium oxide or quick lime. It's made by burning high calcium limestone. It was discovered several thousand years before Christ. Uh, it was used by the ancient Romans and Greeks, uh, etc. It was used uh, with volcanic ash, etc. to make uh, the original mortars in the world, in the, what we say in the old world. So some of you may have heard the term Roman cement or Roman concrete. Uh, this was basically formed with lime and, and clay or lime and uh, fly ash. Uh, lime is almost entirely calcium oxide. It's free to react with alumina and silica and clay to form pozzolans. It reacts with the in situ clay, as I mentioned earlier, and changes the existing uh, clay soil into a pozzolanic cement that continues to gain strength over time. So uh, lime, a lime stabilized subgrade will be stronger a year later after it's constructed. Two years later, it'll be even stronger. Ten years later, We've got many cases in Texas where up to 70 years later, we're able to go in and take cores out of those roadways and see that we have a, a, a tremendous a strength increase uh, over time from the time that's initially constructed. So lime stabilized uh, clay soil remains workable during construction, which is one of the big advantages. So you can, and then it continues to gain strength over time. I'll just point out a few things. Uh, lime is an excellent for uh, stabilizer for fine grain soils and when I say fine grain soils we're mainly talking about expansive clay soils there. Uh, it's not going to work uh, and it's not recommended for gravel, sand, or even silty materials which are the other three common uh, soil types in the world. So that's all I have for you today. Hopefully you've learned a little bit more about the role of pozzolanic reactions in soil stabilization and I appreciate your time and thanks for joining us. Thank you for watching this episode of our podcast. If you want to learn more about the use of lime, reach out to us on our website at limetexas.org. You can also email me at dalerand at limetexas.org. And please follow us on LinkedIn and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.